Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. We have a great, great, great session for you all today. I dug into our member files and found someone with such a wonderful background. Kalinda Allen James is joining us today. She is the Director of Information Technology in the nonprofit sector, a technology leader who is experienced in bringing affordable technology to mission-driven organizations. She believes completely in the growth mindset. That being that all people are able to learn technologies that can improve their own lives and their community. She finds this work rewarding because it allows her to design and execute their technological strategic plans. As a speaker, she speaks on professional development, women in technology, people of color in technology, and the importance of pursuing STEM careers for young people. Kalinda is also a member of the International Association for Women. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Kalinda, for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Absolutely, and you know, your mission-driven work really resonates with me because I'm very um, experienced. I've been on boards and worked in the nonprofit sector as well. And I know how important that technology is, especially for smaller organizations who can't always afford the latest and greatest updates when it comes to their technology. So kudos to you for all the work that you're doing. Thank you. So let me tell you guys how this all happened. Kalinda is, is of course one of our members and she posted in our members only group about her level up career. Um, and she was sharing, cause the first thing you posted, you was like, okay, I can't say anything yet. Um, I have to wait till all the ink is dried. And then you shared in the Facebook group, how you were able to get this next level position. So just tell us a little bit about that or wait a minute, should we start there? Because I, I definitely wanted to talk about your background. So let's do this. We'll put a pin in that. Boop. And just tell us a little bit about how you got started in technology, what drew you to the field, and a little bit about your career path. That might help somebody. Okay. So I've been in information technology for 20 years. Mm -hmm. um, I started in college working at the computer help desk. Mm -hmm. I worked Y2K. It was real. <laughs> a lot of people worked hard. So the world so, wouldn't go into complete chaos. So, uh, so I'm glad that you said that Y2K was real because I was, look, we went and bought all the water. I was a lightweight prepper and I was like, okay, okay. And then I was like, this isn't really going to happen. And then when it didn't happen, I was like, see, they were just but you're, you're telling us it was real. It could have really happened. Yeah, I lost electricity for two hours in Lexington, Kentucky. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. um, I also, you know, worked an internship for the Governor's Office of Technology for the state of Kentucky. Mm -hmm. And in that internship, I worked on their main website, kentucky.gov. Mm -hmm. And I was there to test accessibility to make sure that all the links and websites were accessible to the whole population. Mm -hmm. And that was one of my first glimpse of like how technology affects everyday life. Yeah, yeah. From there, I went and worked with um, the Kentucky Cabinet of Economic Development. Mm -hmm. And in that capacity, I got to see if our email doesn't work, our company can't let us know they want to move to our state and bring 800 jobs. Right, right. If the phones don't work, people can't call to say, hey, I have money I would like to invest in your state. So the infrastructure is the baseline that the organization is built on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And working in the educational sector, when I send a computer home, that computer helps the whole family. It now allows a mother to translate a letter from a school teacher mm -hmm. in the native language. It allows a student or a parent to apply for a job when paper applications are no longer available. 
It provides internet for the household so people can pay bills online and not have to access additional fees. Yes, yes. Wow. So now, so you went, did you go to school for IT or did you go to school for something else? Yes, I have a minor in computer science Mm -hmm. and I have a master's degree in information systems with a concentration in technology leadership. Wow, wow. Awesome. So you knew, you were one of the uh, blessed ones to be able to know what you wanted to do early on and then go after it. Yes. And it has not been a straight path, Mm -hmm. but when I was in my 20s, I thought about where do I want to be at 62 and a half (laughs) retirement? And where I want to be is at director of IT for the the Red Cross. That's Mm -hmm. where I want to end my career. Oh, wow. And so when I look at all my career decisions, I ask myself, would that get me closer to that or further away? That's smart. That's smart. And so because I know what my end goal is, it's much easier and faster to make decisions in the meantime. I'm so glad that you that you talk, that you spoke on that, because in, in my career and talking with my colleagues and um, when I was in corporate, this is something that our mentors taught us because you can't make certain decisions and expect to still, still get where, you're, where you wanna go. So for instance, I like the way you said that you always asked yourself, did this move get me closer to my goal? or further away from my goal. And exactly what you just said about starting with where you want to end up in mind is exactly what the mentor said. Because that will guide your decisions versus you just saying, oh, I'm just ready to go. I wanna go here, there, or wherever. I'm I'm tired of doing this. The next move that you make, does it get you closer? And if it doesn't, maybe you should wait. And if it doesn't and you just have to get out of there, no, that now you're gonna to have to go a roundabout way to get to the end game. Yes. So you said that it wasn't a straight path. Um, talk to us about the zigzag. <laughs> so um, as Cheryl Spanberg pointed out in her um, book, Lean In, yes, the career path is no longer a ladder. Yeah. It's a jungle gym. <laughs> so... I've been doing director level work for 11 years Mm -hmm. without the title and compensation. (sighs) And part of that is lack of strategic planning on companies, Mm -hmm. not providing a path for internal recruitment. Mm -hmm. Part of it is the job market. Yeah. And part of it is the fast pace of technology changing. Got it. When I started 20 years ago, there was no Wi-Fi. Right. I started off as a computer networker with cables underneath desk in closets a very physical job. Yes, yes. And now people have internet standing in the middle of the street on their cell phone. <laughs> so because of these changes, picking a path for um, certifications, mm-hmm. it's a moving target. Mm-hmm. There are companies that are no longer here that were here 10 years ago. Yeah, yeah. Many organizations, your certification expires when they stop selling the product. Yes, yes. The technology industry is still not regulated as a traditional professionals like nurses, doctors, Mm -hmm. or lawyers. Mm -hmm. 
So in some capacities, it is the wild, wild west. Yes. But, and you seem to be able to navigate it very well. You were able to, um, what made you think about, okay, this is, you said that you started with the end in mind. Mm -hmm. So then what made you say, okay, I want this next level position. Talk to us about your thinking as far as, I want to know what the process was. So we're going to go back to what I put a pin in. I yes. want to hear what that process was. But I want to know what was the aha moment for you to say, okay, I've got to switch gears. I've got to do something different to make this happen. So I was just in education. Mm -hmm. And I had certifications sitting on the shelf, mm -hmm. master's degrees sitting on the shelf. Mm -hmm. Because my grandmother said, If you get it in your head, Aww. they cannot take it away from you. And that's the truth. That's the truth. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. So with that in mind, three years before it became necessity for remote learning, mm -hmm. I became a Google certified administrator a Google mm. certified trainer. Mm. When I gave these documents to HR, she was disinterested and just put them in my file. Yeah. Even then, though you had a master's degree. Yes. Then the global pandemic happens. Yeah. And how quickly your school got up and running. Mm -hmm was based on how prepared your internal staff was. Mm. I was able to put up a learning portal mm. in an attendance system in four hours on a wow. week. Wow. I was able to get my school up and running with two snow days when districts around us took seven days. Wow because I had my company on a three-year strategic plan mm -hmm. to move things to the cloud. Mm -hmm. Because I saw this was the future. Yeah. I had to be the visionary leading them if they could not see it yet. Yes. I love it. I love it. And because of this, I became the linchpin of my organization. Mm -hmm. And this provided me with immediate contract renewal and the max increase available. Wow. Very good. You know, but there was work I did three years when nobody cared, when nobody mm -hmm. was interested, which was literally the cornerstone of how I got to be in that position. Wow. Wow. And then um, with the changing of education mm -hmm. and educational budgets of how funding gets to schools yes, and how it can be dispersed amongst the staff, the infrastructure and the students. As we can see as a nation, we don't have a clear educational plan for K through 12 yet. <laughs> yes. So is and, that what is that what made you kind of decide you want to make the shift and start working on um, just your professional development even further to get that, that next level job? Yes. Um, seeing the thing about your career is you don't have to just know your job. You have to know your industry. Mm-hmm. And going into the pandemic, our budget was cut. Yeah, yeah. And then we had to do huge expenditures into hardware to send kids home with internet and computers. Mm -hmm. Anecdotally, I saw people leaving 
but I didn't see people being replaced. So and the work it. just piled up. But the equity in the conversation did not increase. Yeah. And the dollar amount and salary did not change. Right, right. And that is not sustainable. Not at all. So I wanted to branch out to a more diversified nonprofit. Okay. So I was looking for a nonprofit who had diversified missions. Okay. So the money would flow in Mm -hmm. regardless of the global situation exactly so let me just pause here with that for a second and just kind of um um just break it down for people in case anyone's not in the in the um nonprofit world you have a lot of organizations that have one mission and one focus and if if something goes bump it's just like a stock portfolio if something goes bump then all the people who work there they feel that so what Kalinda is speaking of is she wanted an organization that had several different missions so that at any given time, people and resources could be shifted if there was a bump. It didn't mean that you were completely always looking for another job or having to take a pay cut or something like that. Mm-hmm. So, so is that, I'm, I want to get to the point where you said, okay, I'm going to spend the next year working on myself and talk to us about um how you did that like tell us tell us about you know you you spent a lot of time investing in yourself that's what we saw in the post everything you did that's what amazed me so why was it important to invest in yourself and tell us what that process looked like so like Beyonce said a winner always bets on themselves yes And as we say, Beyonce has the same 24 hours as we do, but she don't go to the dry cleaner. Uh, Right. (laughs) So I looked at my time Mm -hmm. and did an executive calendar for a week. And that's where I tracked all my time in 15 minute increments. Okay. And so... I realized I was spending 15 hours a week in a commute. Oh, wow. And with the flexibility of work from home becoming more of an interest to companies, Mm -hmm. I lost my commute and gained 15 hours a week. Wow. A lot of people in the same boat. Yes. Mm -hmm. Winning. And I was just like, I don't have to add anything to my life I can use the time that exists okay and so I took that 15 hours and put it into professional development I did not use it to do hobbies or relax with tv because I already had that built into my schedule right so I use my commute time for professional development. And that gave me the time to do self-study for several computer certifications, which is like $5,000 cheaper than going to a corporate-led course. Yes, okay. And I was able to do that by leveraging my commute time. Awesome. And then really feeling that 15 hours I knew I wanted a different quality of life and I wanted a job closer to my housing. So for me, it just wasn't changing jobs. Okay. Because I love the community I served. It was like a holistic approach of the life I wanted to live Mm -hmm. and who I can support. I love that. I love that. Because a lot of times we just kind of go through our careers and we don't, we don't think about this. We just like, we need to make money, enough money to retire, go on some vacations, this kind of thing. But we don't necessarily look completely 
at the holistic view. So that's pretty cool that you just took a step back Mm -hmm. and did that. Yes. And because I had a holistic review, holistic review of why I wanted to leave the energy departing from my old job was way different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. I prepared exit documents Mm -hmm. to submit with my resignation. Mm -hmm. That's good. To let them know they were going to be okay. Mm -hmm. You know, I guess. Let's just talk about this for a second because Mm -hmm. that's something that I did as well when I left positions. And a lot of people, I walked into a lot of positions where there was nothing that could help me. You know, you kind of had to figure it out on your own. And I, I, I always took that away. And I said, I never want anybody else to come into this position, not knowing what to do. So I prepared exit document documentation as well. And I wonder if you kind of heard the same stuff from some people as like, for me, it's about my integrity. And sounds like it was about that for you as well. People are like, why would you do that? You're leaving. And why would you help them? You know, like everyone wants to be an information hoarder and it's not necessary because like you said, the energy is different. You know, you're moving on to bigger and better. Why not give them whatever they need so they can, they can, they can go on seamlessly, whether you're there or not. And so this is threefold. One, if you know your industry, you know, your industry is small and this will come up again. Mm hmm. Exactly. And, exactly. Because everybody moves around with jobs. And so they hear and they're like, oh, yeah, Kalinda left so and so and she left everything a mess. Because we've all had, heard those conversations as well, right? Yes. Yeah. And as an integral foundational component department, information technology, that is just not a good look. Yeah. And the words corporate espionage may come your way. <laughs> The second reason, so you can leave cleanly, so people are not calling you every five minutes when you leave. Yes. And thirdly, is they're open to your consultancy rates for future (laughs) questions if they know you didn't hustle them to get extra money. Yes, that that is very good. I want to speak to the piece about people calling you every five minutes. When you leave a job, I have seen people make this mistake so many times and say, hey, call me if you need anything or um, I'll still make myself available. And I'm not saying don't do it ever because I have certainly benefited from people who left the position helping me you know, afterward. But the truth is you are going to be going to a new job. Your first 90 days, you need to hit the ground running. You need to have your head down, learning that culture that position, you're not necessarily going to remember so much or even be able to have time to worry about the questions that people have at the other job. So you can do that maybe for a couple of weeks, maybe for a month, but in all honesty, you don't want people still calling you about a previous job, I dare say even a month later. So that so that's a good point. So now tell us, you know, you you have created this spreadsheet. You had a whole system. How long, tell us about how long it took, what you did. Um, I know you said you worked with somebody. Tell us about all that. Okay, so the whole process from leaving my old situation to getting a dream job mm-hmm. that I've been trying to get for 11 years, <laughs> it took, 14 months, Mm -hmm. it cost me Mm $2,500 and it was 1,086 women hours. Look at you, you got the hours down. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And I like to have the transparency so people can admire accurately. Absolutely, absolutely. And so you too can have my fabulous life, but it does not happen for free and it does not happen in five minutes. 
Yes, 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 yes. Did you guys hear that? She invested $2,500. And we're going to dig into that a little bit more. And she took the time. We already You already shared about the 15 hours that you were able to save from the community. You, you put that towards investing in your career as far as time-wise. And you invested money, $2,500. So tell me, so tell us, look, at, what do they say? Say more. <laughs> yeah. So... And what I found was I did a mix of free things, low cost and high ticket items. Mm -hmm. And the high ticket items had the most return on investment. Mm -hmm. So some of the free items I participated in with my local library card, they offered free professional development courses that produce certificates at the end. Mm -hmm. So I spent about 400 hours in free professional development for my computer certifications. So I wouldn't have to participate in the $5,000 corporate classes. Yes, yes, love that, love it. Um, I also went to my computer companies directly mm -hmm. and many of them had time-based challenges. If you could do so much of their tutorial in 30 days, they would give you a free voucher to take the exam. Oh, wow. These exams cost anywhere from $125 to $700. Wow. And so that is a major barrier mm -hmm. for many people. But these are gatekeepers between you and the jobs you want. Mm -hmm. And so because of the cost, I need to make sure I was passing on the first time. Yes. So we were studying like we was trying to get that first degree. <laughs> <laughs> we wasn't playing in here at these prices because they're not, not refundable. All. Not at all. Mm-hmm. And then also many of these dams have um, retake policies where you only get three attempts in a calendar year. Mm -hmm. So if this certification is job dependent, you have to be aware of these limits mm -hmm. so you can plan accordingly. Yes, absolutely. Um, one of the things that, that was a high ticket item. I joined the International Association of Women at their influence club. And that gave me premium access to their networking roster, mm -hmm. premium access to various professional developments. I went to a virtual happy hour on the West Coast. And I was learning that people in real estate, people in um, manufacturing were using this tool called Salesforce. Yes. Mm -hmm. And when I researched it further, I realized they had a nonprofit specialty pack. Yeah, yeah. And so I pursued that certification because it was used amongst diverse industries. Yes, yes. And a lot of and non industry I was right now. Yeah. And the industry I wanted to stay in, which was nonprofit. Mm -hmm. And other things I learned from the organization, they had talks on health and wellness. They had talks on... Um, um, visualization, vision boards, mm -hmm. networking. You can be divided by your local community, by your city or right. state. Right. And so I got a lot of valuable person to person information to set me on my path. Love it. Absolutely love it. I like, I like, like you said, you know, you did tap into the free things. I love how you talk about the hours and how you just study, study, study so you could get that credit and, and you wouldn't have to pay for it. 
-hmm. but then you you were you are willing to invest in yourself to get where you need to be and i think that's lost on a lot of people they are everybody is looking for what's free mm -hmm. and i'm not telling you to go out and spend a ton of money randomly as you can see just like you did they need to do deep research mm -hmm. understand what what the best organizations are to be a part of what the best certifications are to take but everything is not going to be free and i always tell people uh, the other piece is a lot of people are always looking for their company to pay for stuff. And if their company says no, then they just don't do it. And I'm like, no, this is your career. Own your own career. Save up the money and go to that conference. Take that certification. Pay for it yourself. Yes, it might be $1,000, you know, $1,500, $2,000. But what it, I like the way you said that when you, when you paid for the membership at the influence level, all the doors, it really, all the access that it gave you. And that, you know, that is, that's the key. Some, sometimes you are paying for access. I have even been guilty early on because sometimes we're too smart for our own good. And you're like, I already know about all that. Why would I join that? I already know about that. And it wasn't until later in my career that I realized um, it's not always about learning. Sometimes it's about being at the table with people and networking with them that will take you to the next level, even if you're not learning anything new. So that's for anybody who's like, who thinks that they know everything. Number one, nobody knows everything. So get over yourself. Like I had to get over myself. And number two, sometimes you just need to have a seat at the table in order to eat. And that's just it. Mm -hmm. And the so other thing about being at the table is even if you know it, you learn how other people are using that same knowledge in a different way. Exactly. Because one of the free things I use was Lunch Club AI, mm -hmm. which is a invitation only virtual networking. And I was actually paired with a former board member of a company I worked with oh wow and what he explained to me is something I knew but I didn't know what it meant okay and what they explained to me was that my company's charter had a cap on it meaning that my company can never get bigger than what it was. Wow. Why would anybody do that? Different structuring for businesses. Yeah. But as an employee, I understood that it was common knowledge at the organization, but I didn't understand it until I talked to a former board member who explained what the information I knew meant. There it is. I love that. And so having that piece of information let me know that my organization, though beloved to me, was not a 20-year organization for me. Exactly. Exactly. Because there's, there's only one, you know, there's only one CEO spot. How far can you go in IT in or any position really in an organization where the um, where it's capped? So yeah. and Good. learning that information when I was on the job search, I made sure the organizations I was applying to didn't have a built-in cap. See? So if you had not been a part of that group and mm -hmm. paired up with him, you would not have even known to ask that question. Correct. And yeah. that was a piece of information that I knew intellectually, but I didn't know how that fact was applied to my career. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And so while you were looking, like you got a really great job at a crazy time of year, you know, a lot of people out of work and a lot of people were scared to look for new jobs because so many people were out of work. So just tell us, you know, what advice would you give to someone who's, who's looking right now? Lead 
with certainty, not fear. Mm -hmm. Because I had a job offer before I got my dream job. Mm -hmm. It was a work from home. It was like a $25,000 pay cut. Oh, wow. And the benefits were going to be double what I was previously paid. Mm. And I could have taken that job from a place of desperation and these, like, there's no commute if I work from home. Right, right, right. But because I was laser focused on what I wanted and Mm. where I wanted to be, I knew that job was going to take me further away from my ultimate goal at 62 and a half. Yeah. So I turned it down. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. And a week later, the dream job came with the pension. A whole with week the, later. The $17,000 increase. Yeah. It came with the perks. Yeah. You know? But if, and because I was leading from certainty, I could wait. Yes. I wasn't leaving out of desperation for my job. I wasn't leaving a toxic environment. I was like leaving for a holistic lifestyle reason. Absolutely. And that energy and that approach helped. Love it. The other thing that the focus did was I only had to apply to 22 jobs to get 12 interviews. Oh, wow. Did you get any help with like interview prep or anything like that? So yes, Um, lifetime career services for my undergrad and my graduate school. Mm -hmm. So I used those free resources to do practice interviews on video, practice interviews on phone, Mm -hmm. resume reviews also Mm -hmm. came free, just lifetime services for my undergrad. So I did access that free service. But during the process of networking, I joined a study group Mm -hmm. um, for the AWS certification on Facebook. Mm -hmm. I was in that group for five months oh good and the moderator came to me you're the only person studying (laughs) the only person sharing flashcards the only person sharing coupon codes I want to help you I love it this woman gave me the equivalent of $1,000 of career services for free. Wow, wow. We redid the cover letter, the LinkedIn, the introduction emails, the resume. Mm -hmm. We did the tears. Mm -hmm. We like, but you're changing my identity. Like, no, we're giving what is readable. Yes, yes. (laughs) And... And who was that now? Her name is Mila. Mm -hmm. I can send you her LinkedIn. And she is very generous to the tech community. And she supports women in technology. Mm -hmm. She's based in Canada. Okay. And you said, tell me more about the spreadsheet she gave you. Just, um, you don't have to go into all the details, Mm -hmm. but just when you posted that in the group, it, you know, the, the uh, numbers and the organization nerd in me leaped for joy. Like I'm a spreadsheet person. I'm a planner. Um, my sister just to tease me when I was having my youngest daughter, I had, a, they found one of my lists and I had a list of everything I had to do. And at the bottom of the list was have baby. And they're like, what is your problem lady? So the, when I saw that spreadsheet, I was like, man, this is wonderful. I got to hear more about this. So talk to us about that process a little bit. Yes. As a career coach, she was just like, you've got your dream job. Now let's take a step back and really calculate what it took to get here. So you'll know the investment it took. Mm. So you can accurately decide if you're going to change up in five minutes. (laughs) (laughs) 
And it's a great we, way to keep you focused, huh? <laughs> yes. And so what we did was we looked at the cost, physically dollar amount, mm -hmm. the time cost of every activity I did. And we did a scale of one, totally worth it, you know, five, five not worth it mm -hmm. for each item. And this is where I knew that some of the high ticket items did faster, quicker movement for mm -hmm. me in this career path mm -hmm. than the free items. Okay. And what this also did is let me know to turn down opportunities that take lots of time, but don't produce the fruit. Mm, mm. Because when you're on the job search and you're not clear what you want, many things will be offered to you as help. And when you don't accept that help after you said, I take anything, mm. you just burnt a network branch. Yeah. yeah. And so when I was on my job search, I was very clear, nonprofit, thousand people or less, mm -hmm. had to be based in New York City, Mm -hmm. So this means I didn't access my California right. leads right. so that lead could go to somebody else who could use it because mm -hmm. each person only has so many introductions. That's right. And so because I was focused in my ask, I got directed help that just took 22 applications and 12 interviews because I wasn't reaching out to everybody underneath the sun yeah. when I truly in my soul didn't want that work. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I love it. I love it. I love it. And thank you so much for just being number one, so open to sharing and, and, lifting others up. I can see why your career coach reached out to you because the same way you've been in that group, you've certainly been as a member of ours. Um, at our members only group, you, you just, you just show up and you help everybody. So you're definitely paying it forward. And so it, so she's, she invested in you and you're investing in others. And so that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Any anything else you have to share um, to encourage someone who may be on this journey themselves? So, like I would encourage you, as you can see with my Facebook access, this is the perfect networking for the introvert. Mm -hmm. By showing yourself online versus in like a group happy hour setting, you can show what you have to offer and attract the people who are going to be team you. Mm -hmm. Secondly, document, document, document your time to make sure your time is going to the dreams you have. Because mm. time is being spent every day. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have pure Calgon release after Netflix and chill, <laughs> you know, cut it down to a net and chai and have that time and like invest in professional development, yes. invest in your business, yeah. invest in that family relationship. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you so much, Kalinda. Please share with everybody how they can, can reach you, how they can connect with you on LinkedIn. Yes. So I can be found on Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn at Kalinda the Tech. And I can also be accessed at my website, www.kalindathetech.com. Thank you. Love it. Love it. Love it. Thank you so much. I definitely would love to have you 
come back on um, whenever you're available because I think you have so much to offer, especially around the STEM conversation, the tech conversation. And thank you for helping so many with this interview on how they can, the steps that they can take to get their level up next position. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, bye. Thank you.